Great. Thank you very much for your patience. Uh, and I hope you can see my screen here. Okay, so my talk is focusing on chemistry and the hope but it's not going to be too uh, boring for all of you. Uh, I'm going to focus on the study which we did for the spike protein uh, of the uh, SARS-CoV-2 virus. And that's the icon of the coronavirus has like a corona spike-like uh, formation. And uh, I'd like to acknowledge first that my group and uh, those who involved heavily uh, with the bold font and uh, I'd like to thank for NSF, especially for the major grant. So talking about uh, spike protein, uh, I want to show you the animation showing the part of the spike protein, which has a S1, S2 domain. Left-hand side, I'm showing the uh, process, which is going. So uh, S2 come in, comes in as a receptor that take off the S1 part. Then uh, now the S2 part is going to anchor on to the uh, human membrane, then uh, they are going to fold back and merge the virus uh, cell and also the, the human cell together and then spits out the RNA uh, into the human body, then infected. And uh, this is the intro of the infection. So spike protein makes a huge role to start the infection. And also, uh, as you may have heard that the mRNA vaccine uh, basically uh, asked human cell to copy the spike protein and uh, uh, train us to have the antibody to uh, fight against it. So spike protein uh, can be a little bit of the behind the scene, but it's very uh, interesting thing to uh, talk about. And the uh, methodology that I like to use here is uh, since I'd like to focus on only spike protein, uh, I don't want to think about the list of the virus part. So simply just try to anchor or place the spike protein on the uh, some particle. In this case, I'm going to use uh, gold nanoparticle, uh, gold particle, and uh, has the two parts, uh, part which is accepting the uh, S2 and also taking off the, uh, this S1 part. Uh, out and then the S2 part is the fusion protein part that you saw in the animation. It's going to go onto the cell and try to uh, merge. Now, uh, the first question, of course, is does this uh, spike protein attach onto the gold surface? Nobody knew. So that uh, I uh, took the uh, microscopy, which uses the electron to probe the uh, uh, object. Then, uh, as you can see, it's a very fuzzy thing, but I'm so excited to see this. So if you focus on the left-hand side and look at the edge of the this uh, gold nanoparticle, uh, it's a dark sphere, then you see a very fuzzy part, which is uh, spiking out definitely. Uh, so it's really obvious compared to the case when uh, you have acidic condition, then uh, uh, two things happens. Uh, number one, that if you take a look at the surface of the gold, nanoparticle, uh, there's no fuzzy thing. So it's actually acting like a sheet. And now at the same time, they are trying to uh, make friends with the other nanoparticle and they try to attach each other. So they're making interactions. And uh, uh, that's actually a cue for the next uh, point that I'd like to make. The reason why I am so interested in doing spike protein is uh, uh, the thing that we uh, have the paper that uh, showing reporting that the spike uh, protein is making amyloidogenesis. Uh, it's making fiber. So it's uh, similar to what you observe in Alzheimer's disease. In that case, uh, amyloid beta is the major thing that the people think is a, a cause of the fiber. So uh, that is the uh, reason, the major motivation. So now I I'm sure that you are asking why I want to use gold nanoparticle. Uh, here is the uh, first reason why, uh, because it has a color so that uh, I can actually monitor what's going on. Uh, for example, if I uh, can use the example for A beta 140, that's the uh, uh, iconic protein for Alzheimer's disease, uh, then for uh, pH 7 or pH 10, so either uh, neutral or uh, basic condition, then they don't want to make aggregates. 
they just want to keep the structure of the protein as folded, so they are not welcoming to interact with each other. And it has the color of the red. However, if you make the pH 4, which is the acidic condition, then we can control the structure of this protein. They, they unfold, and then they're going to welcome or invite other protein, and they start connecting gold to gold each other. So you can see that the chunk of the ag aggregates here. Then the color also changes into the blue. So by looking at the color of the solution, we are able to tell what's going on on the protein on the surface of gold. So that's the huge advantage. And also, another thing is, uh, I'm going to show you that uh, uh, this example, this is the a very artistic, I think, but this is actually coming from the gold colloid aggregates. So gold colloid aggregates, which has the amyloid beta on the top. And uh, my point here is that uh, by creating gold colloid aggregates, we are able to make the stage to detect uh, something uh, which would contain protein-protein interaction. In other words, if there's no interaction between uh, protein, in this case, spike protein, then you won't see the aggregates. So that uh, finding gold colloid aggregates, uh, this uh, chunk of particles, uh, that's showing that uh, we have something to study about uh, uh, protein protein interaction. Okay, and uh, uh, this is a little bit busy, and uh, I'm hesitant to sort of uh, go fast, but uh, uh, what you're seeing here on the left hand panel is it's like a uh, doing the experiment. So this is what exactly uh, we did. So we actually add uh, acid or base uh, externally and making the pH condition either four or 10 uh, back to back. Uh, why we are doing this? Because we wanna see if the uh, protein coded, coded, coded aggregates can make a reversible, either mega aggregates or uh, disassemble so that we can, uh, if if we can control the structure of the protein on the top of the gold. So in this case, we see that uh, uh, things are actually going quasi reversible and uh, we can actually plot that the peak, it's not exactly reversible, but we can see it's going back and forth. And uh, this video is not really as synchronized with this panels, but uh, they're actually showing the idea. I think it gives you an idea what kind of color you will see. So uh, this is great. So this is what we probably expect to see if the spike protein uh, is attached and also they uh, perform the same way that the amyloid beta 140. So here's the uh, result uh, for the spike protein. So I am plotting the, the peak shift. Uh, so as you can see, a lot of go back and forth. And in this case, uh, if you're wondering, I'm showing a lot of the uh, waves here. So it actually has a label of D from 10 to 100 nanometers. So what I did here is I changed the core size of the gold nanoparticle and see if there's a certain uh, threshold that they start making this reversible uh, process of aggregation. And then you can see that the clearly uh, between 20 and 30, there is a difference so that uh, it has the point that the spike protein seems to attach and then uh, make the uh, reversible process uh, if the size of the uh, core is larger than 30 nanometers. Uh, from the report, as far as I know, the size of the spike protein overall is reported to be 100 nanometers. So therefore, uh, the spike protein, uh, I think, uh, reported to be about 10 nanometers. So I think the, the uh, spike protein that we're seeing is a case that the corresponding to when D equals 80 nanometers there's a 10, 10 uh, spike sticking out. Now, my point here is uh, I'm so excited to see that the spike protein uh, can be able to make aggregates. Uh, that is actually the uh, reason why I wanted to study so that it has the uh, good uh, stage that they we're able to study how they are going to make uh, uh, interaction and uh, leading to the fibril. Now, uh, so that's pretty much the, the thing which done and then uh, the rest of the three or four slides I'm going to talk about study in progress. Uh, I have two questions to ask. Uh, number one, uh, I know now that the uh, spike protein called the gold can make aggregates. That's good. However, how spike protein absorbs on the gold surface? Uh, 
what's the first stage to go into the uh, uh, nanoparticle? And then question number two is, then what is the structure or like a conformation of the spike proteins when they're forming aggregates? Uh, for that, uh, I recently published the paper which talks about uh, uh, amyloid beta 140 reaching to the, to the surface and uh, it actually revealed that uh, uh, benzene ring contained part of tyrosine or phenylalanine approaching to the surface. And then after that, uh, beta sheet formation is used to networking the uh, protein. So that could be maybe the hint or maybe could be the answer for the spike protein case. And for that study, I use this called, uh, uh, it's kind of confusing, but it's not SARS, it's a SARS. Uh, surface enhanced Raman scattering imaging. This is basically image then very uniquely by using the Raman signals. So the uh, this is another reason why uh, nanoparticle, gold nanoparticle was used because it has a huge signal uh, on the top of the gold surface. So very quickly, I just want to talk about the uh, preliminary result. Uh, when I have the spike protein called the gold colloid and uh, trying to see the Raman imaging, I was successful to get the Rama imaging. Uh, like a thermal camera, if you that if uh, you see the people, then you have a different temperature, different color. I'm actually showing this thing as a spectroscopically different color corresponding to different uh, component spectrum, so that you can actually image the uh, uh, particle. This is the uh, nano uh, gold nanoparticle aggregates uh, with spike protein uh, has different component, and uh, I am successful to uh, find out uh, some of the uh, part which is around this region called the fingerprint region. It's well studied. Uh, we know what kind of motion of the uh, molecule is going on, but I'm more interested in the part which is not well reported. This is the part that I'm trying to study harder. And also it's possible to make a three dimensional uh, slice of the spectrum and uh, being able to find out the a particular section of the networking or not networking part. And also, uh, lastly, uh, you are able to uh, make the uh, uh, mobile section of the uh, spike protein by uh, uh, adding the ACE2. So this is the trigger of the uh, infection. And then uh, you are able to make the uh, uh, what they call the aggregates to be mobile because of the ACE2. So that would uh, allow us to study uh, which section of the uh, spike protein would be uh, mobile. So this is just trying to show you that uh, uh, video and also the image. Uh, so we, I can actually tell which part of the color corresponding to the mobile sections. Sorry, I'm going too long, but uh, this is my conclusion. So I have three conclusions. Uh, spike protein likely adsorbs onto the gold surface, and also uh, uh, spike protein called gold called nanoparticle can form aggregates, can uh, be used for studying further details, and also uh, it, by adding the ACE2, uh, able to create a, a different set of the study to uh, find out the mobility of the spike protein. Thank you so much.